I'm Rachel. I'm an obstetric nurse and I'm here today to discuss cervical dilation for the new nurse. So um, first of all, most important, make sure that you have identified and have found the cervix. That is one of the biggest and most difficult feats to overcome as a new nurse. But once you have identified it and found it, it is unmistakable. For today, we will use my hand as a uh, example of a cervix. So if let's just say uh, you were to go to touch the cervix and you did have it and you knew it was a cervix. If you are able to touch that opening and you cannot get a finger in, um, then that means that you are at a zero, that patient is at a zero dilation or closed cervix. Now, as that cervix um, dilates uh, through labor, then the opening becomes bigger and wider and wider. So when I am checking, I can get, if I know I can get one finger in, that's approximately one to one and a half centimeters in diameter. And um, from there, I check with two fingers as we, as the patient dilates further. And then um, as that opening gets bigger, then my fingers expand. So some of the household objects I have here um, are pretty common throughout a lot of homes. So I'm going to use for example, a 10 fluid ounce bottle of uh, fingernail polish remover. Um, the cap on that fingernail polish remover is approximately two and a half centimeters in diameter. So uh, if you were to put fingers in a cervix, you would have, it, it would be wide enough to be able to, for me and my check would be wide enough to have some wiggle room, uh, give, have a little bit of give, and uh, that's approximately two and a half centimeters in diameter. The next size up I have available is a 40 ounce bottle of barbecue sauce. This bottle, um, the cap on this bottle is approximately four centimeters in diameter. So again, um, if I would be going in for a cervical exam, I can go ahead and fit two fingers in and there's a bit of a give, a bit of uh, room there to wiggle and move. Now the next item I have is Heinz ketchup and it is 50 and a half ounces in weight. Uh, the cap on this is approximately five centimeters in diameter. Again, you'd be going in checking your finger width would be moving open wider. Um, as this is happening, the patient's cervix is also changing in station and effacement, but we'll go over that in another video. So if you like to drink pop, a 12 ounce can of my favorite Diet Mountain Dew is approximately between five and five and a half centimeters in diameter. So you can kind of tell that there's, you know, it's not, it doesn't even look much different, um, but sometimes you'll have the half. So four and a half, five and a half, six and a half centimeters diameter is, um, is okay to give as a measurement as well. Um, next item I have, Parmesan cheese, eight ounce container. Uh, this is approximately, the lid is approximately seven centimeters in diameter. I know that the patient's progressing and um, it's nice because then I know that she's probably on the downward swing of the hard task of dilating to 10, but she's not quite there yet. She may feel uncomfortable. I may feel a bag of water. I may feel the baby's head kind of prote protruding past this point, but the cervix itself is not completely 10 yet. So. The next item I have is my handy dandy Skippy peanut butter, 64 ounces. Uh, this lid on this container is approximately 10 centimeters. So, and this is about how far apart my fingers would have to be before I get to that full 10 in diameter. Now, um, most times I'm not able to reach either side um, inside of the patient as I'm checking their cervix. So I'm looking at a couple other identifiers that will tell me whether or not they are completely 10 yet. And one of those is if I'm feeling what's called a lip. So any bit of the cervix that I'm feeling when I'm going in to do my check, I know that that patient is not 10 yet. So she may feel the bag of water is really close there. She wants to start pushing, but she can't because if I feel any bit of a lip of the cervix, I know she's not complete and that's gonna be a long process of pushing. So um, I kind of just let her know that she should not be pushing quite yet, um, or I would leave that up to the doctor if he would like to try to help move that 
cervix out of the way and start pushing with the patient. Um, but most times we really like to see that that lip of the cervix is completely out of the way, um, therefore leaving all of that space and ample opportunity for that baby to come out with um, less complications. So another indicator I know that the patient is complete or a 10, most times what I see most happening or most often is that the baby um, is starting to make its way out of the cervix and mom's through the contractions, the baby and the mom are kind of just in sync, pushing on their own. So not being told to, but just feeling like this absolute urge to need to push. And um, the patient may be vocal, the patient may just um, explain to you as the nurse, hey, I need to push. Or she just may start pushing loudly on her own. And um, most times then when I go in to check for the cervix, I'm not feeling anything anymore. And I know that that patient then is ready to start pushing for labor um, or that patient is ready to start laboring down. And um, so these are a few of the objects that I have. I hope that helps check out a couple of the other videos I have. I really just hope that I can help you out and make your life a little bit easier on the job. Thanks for watching.